So, I want to do that. So, spend time on the spirit. So, basic principle is the following that if we have a commutative algebra, it is from this thing this principle comes. A is a commutative algebra, it could be over historically, of course, originally it was not over C, it was over arbitrary field scale. And then one always <coughs> try to think of this space as kind of can we think of? functions on some space and this space turned out to be the maximal ideals of A and first instance of this was a very famous theorem of Hilbert, Hilbert's null stellar search. So, he gave a recipe. If you have some algebra A, then you look at a maximal ideal M and look at this quotient. So, you have this map pi, maybe we can do decorate it by pi M. So, you can think of elements of the algebra. Suppose A is an element in the algebra. I want to think of this as a function on the space of maximal ideals. So, <coughs> m is a maximal ideal. So, you want to think of this as a function. So, how do I do? So, how does A act on a maximal ideal? Hilbert's suggestion was look at this quantity. Now, as m is a maximal ideal, this is a field, but this field could be kind of varying over m. So, in this prescription, I want to think of a as a function, but I do not know kind of, I want to think of a as a function from this space, but I do not know what the range is. So, of course, one has to make this sense precise. And for that in the algebraic case, there are solutions and in the Banach algebra case, of course, things becomes much more simpler. So, if A is a Banach algebra and so people took motivation from this and so they wanted to shift this in the functional analytic setting and then first crucial observation. I stated this fact, but I did not attribute any name. Their observation was the following that if A is a Banach algebra <coughs> in which invertible elements of A are kind of except 0, everything is invertible, then that means like A is like a field, right? A is like a field. So, then A must be C. So, this observation settled this issue because if we are in the Banach setting and we are looking at maximal ideals, so let us at this moment stress maximal closed ideals, they are always closed. So, this issue is already settled. So, starting with arbitrary element, we can define now a homomorphism from M to C. So, this issue is settled. So, if A is a commutative Banach algebra, <coughs> then we have this transformation from A, we this fact that you can turn this into a topological space that is a standard game. So, you call x hat to be phi of x and then x hat is defined like that. So, this observation had its motivation in this fact. Then of course, he wanted to go one step ahead. In this case, in good situations, one can identify what kind of algebras 
are these. So, finitely generated k algebras. So, he also wanted to see when is this an isomorphism. And of course, one convenient condition which turns this into an isomorphism is like if A is a sister algebra. And so, if A is a sister algebra, then F is an isomorphism. Therefore, it becomes a much more concrete object. It is no longer an abstract thing, but it is an isomorphism. And so, so A is isomorphic with C0 of M and M is locally compact Hausdorff. Once the map is known to verify that it is locally compact Hausdorff follows from this definition of weak star and compactness of unit ball in X star and continuity and so on and so forth are really routine verifications, but I was writing them again and again. So, there is no point in that. Fact is to realize that you are given a commodity Banach algebra, one tries to think of them as functions, continuous functions, and if it is sister algebra, then it is exactly the same as that. Otherwise, it kind of there is a map which need not be injected. So, when this is done, once this is done, there are two kinds of theorems. Meaning, I was heading for a proof of this fact that if A is a sister algebra, then I can always embed A into B of H. So, point of this theorem, I will <coughs> do a proof of this fact, but point of this theorem is that sister algebras are not abstract objects, but they are concrete. And after doing that, so what, what was I doing, kind of what did I do yesterday? Yesterday I was proving this fact now that to which extent. So, this shows commutative sister algebra is C0 of M, but then question remains that you start with a space say X to this thing you attach this space or the algebra C0 of X and then starting with this you can attach your space M. Question is, is this space known? So, yesterday we proved that this is actually same as X. Therefore, from X, if you pass here, you do not lose any information. Other way also, you start with your algebra A, which is a commutative algebra you pass to C0 of M, <coughs> then you pass to, sorry, you pass to M, maximal ideals and that is already this isomorphism. So, this is isomorphic with A. Therefore, this passage does not, one does not lose any information by passing to the continuous function. So, that is the message that if we consider meaning instead of compact house of spaces, if we consider commutative sister algebra, so we do not lose anything. And in one more class, what I did was the following that I was trying to describe some examples and so again today also I want to spend some time on that. So, 
that is the spirit in which I like these things that there are various contexts and then starting from a context one can attach a sister algebra and study that. So that is very important because then otherwise it does not become kind of a purely internal theory. So I, I, I do not want to ask let A be a sister algebra and then prove few properties but they occur in nature. So I want to describe one more example. Oh, anyway, I, I'll come back to this. So, I just write down the notion. We will prove this, but <coughs> to understand. Before you erase this, do you want to tell about quaternion field or not? Up to you. No, 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 no. So, So you have a sister algebra A is a then an element A is positive if firstly A equal to A star and spectrum of A is greater than or equal to 0 and then of course this notion is equivalent with the following things which I will prove later not now that A is positive, then A equal to B square for some self adjoint B, 3 is A equal to X star X for some X in A. Okay. So, keep that definition in mind and we pass to something else. So, what this example I will discuss this does is the following. So, as we see something for example, suppose I draw a triangle or maybe I draw a tetrahedron, what is it that come to your mind? What? Convex sets. Convex sets, fine, very good. Topological objects, okay, he says it is a topological object, he says it is a convex set and then anything else. Yes? No? Nothing comes to your mind? Okay. So, as he says a convex set and he says a topological space, so let me draw few more. So, now if I draw along with this a picture like that, then what does it, it come to your mind? Of course, his case is then ruled out. So, of course, meaning we have seen all of this in the topology class <coughs> and these are topological spaces, but not kind of arbitrary topological spaces. These, these are very special topological spaces, right? These are called simplicial complexes. So, I have, but so let us look at this concept of simplicial complex. Now, as kind of we look at this definition of simplicial complex, it does not talk of any picture, any triangle, tetrahedron and things like that. It comes in the topology books and it comes in the books of combinatorics. So, simplicial complex is given by two pieces of data. <coughs> Firstly, we have a set, say let us reserve this symbol sigma. So, we have a set V sigma 
which is a set and which we call it set of vertices and then we have another subset let us call it f sigma this is a kind of But remember that these are called faces of sigma, but remember I am not considering all possible finite subsets, that is not true, it is a subset of finite subsets, okay. So sigma, it is a collection of finite subsets of B sigma, so strictly speaking this is incorrect. If I write it like that, it means I am considering all finite subsets, so this is incorrect, right. But with this understanding that I do not consider all. So maybe a better way of describing this is F sigma is a subset of this such that such that if I have sigma here and tau is a subset of sigma, this implies tau is an element in f sigma that is condition 1 and of course condition 1 already forces or no it does not quite force but let us force that. So all these vertices are actually kind of if B is an element there then this set containing sigma B is a phase. So, how is that related? <coughs> in this case, we have a vertex set. So, vertex set consists of these three points 0, 1, 2. So, vertex set is 0, 1, 2. And then, of course, we can have two choices. So, we can have say f equal to I can have all these two point sets 0, 1, 1, 2, and 0, 2. Just stop there or and of course along with this one point sets then that condition is satisfied otherwise I write it clearly here I can take f of this to be equal to this is also a consistent choice. Similarly, in this case, I can take all these five vertices and these edges. So, by these edges, I mean I take these two point sets. I may take this three point set also, I may take this one also, and I may take all of them. So, this gives rise to simplicial complexes. And then, in topology, what one does is starting with a simplicial complex. At the next stage, one passes to a topological space. If I erase this, when I come to this, I will use this, but this definition will be needed. So, keep this definition in mind. So, one passes to a topological space and starts analyzing that. And so, that leads us to this concept of, okay, I need one more definition. So, sigma is locally finite <coughs> if for all B in B sigma I count all these faces which contains B this is a finite set. So, every vertex is contained in finitely many of these elements and elements of f sigma are called simplices. So, 
it is locally finite if every vertex is contained in finitely many of those simplices and now comes the definition of geometric realization. So, this is a topological space I want to construct a topological space that is what one always does in topology. This subject has nothing to do with topology it is a combinatorial object finite set and its subsets with certain relations, but then one passes to this space. So, these are functions from this <coughs> to the unit interval such that support of f is finite in fact support of f is an element here and as support of s is finite so this is actually a finite sum so If we define notion of convergence as pointwise convergence, then this becomes a topological space. in this context there is a <coughs> famous problem which is the following even earlier even before coming to the topological space. So, suppose and this notion I describe only using picture because again you can have the precise notion from books it is just to give you some flavor. So, suppose I have a simplicial complex what I do is I introduce new vertices maybe I introduce three new vertices or I can introduce new faces I, I, I introduce new vertices and of course new faces such that what should I say? <coughs> so, I will maybe. So, what do I do? I will tell you. So, this vertex sits on this edge, okay. So, now I my vertex set is the following. So, it is an abstract set. So, it consists of 0, 1, 2, but now my new vertex is, is on an edge therefore, what mathematically speaking what I do is I introduce now new finite <coughs> subsets of my vertex set as indices now. This one. I may have this one or I may not have this one because if I do the meaning it, it may give the impression that I have to do it always. So, this is my new vertex set and now this will change the nature of faces. For example, in my new simplicial complex this 0 1 is no longer a meaning it is a face it is a face, but new faces will be like this increasing now faces will get changed faces will get changed. So, faces will be like 0 and increasing flags of subsets ok. So, let us do it. So, as I am doing it precisely let me do it precisely my new vertex set is the following I take my old vertex set and some of its finite subsets <coughs> but these finite subsets 
cannot be arbitrary they must come from faces of sigma okay so i have this finite subsets and now my new set of faces now my so uh, you have to specify faces also right? yes i'll do that that's why i'm doing so my vertices original one huh? original faces Yes, in the original one, of course, faces are already there. I start with this initial okay. complex, and now I am producing a new one. So my in the new thing, vertices are old vertices plus some of the finite subsets which comes from faces, and new faces are like flag. So what does it mean? What is a flag? A flag is a increasing chain of subsets. Okay, for example, in this case, this is a flag. This is a set, and this contains this. So this is a face in my new simplicial complex. This this is the mathematical description and pictorial image I have in my mind is this is this edge. Similarly, if I put one comma zero one, it is this edge. So faces are flags. Flags means finite. increasing change from B tilde. <clears throat> so this procedure, this procedure of passage, so you let us call these things maybe sigma tilde instead of there. So this passage sigma to sigma tilde is called a subdivision. And again, while taking notes, it is not essential that you note down everything, but it is essential that you note down this keyword. Maybe I should write down <coughs> some people call it reserve this word barycentric for a very special subdivision. Some people call just this thing also barycentric subdivision. So, importance of noting down this keyword is go to Google or something and find out what is a subdivision precisely. But Mathematical question is the following and which is difficult and not known. You start with two simplicial complexes, sigma 1 and sigma 2. Then, of course, you can have couple of subdivisions, maybe few times you do that. So, this thing also you do it few times. Okay. Then you want to ask this question that is there a chain of subdivisions such that these two becomes isomorphic. So looking at sigma 1 and sigma 2, can you say that these objects are isomorphic? Okay. Of course, this question is very easily stated and that means either it is trivially done or it is very difficult. And it is obviously in the second class and it is related with the and in the topological case, you can ask the same question, not isomorphism of these two, but isomorphism of several times these two topological spaces. Okay. And again, this is a very celebrated problem in topology that it is difficult to answer. So, <coughs> what is our goal? Our goal is the following. <coughs> Since kind of in colleges or universities, topology is kind of you encounter it quickly. For example, in algebraic topology class, you, you, and so on, whoever has done, who has seen this space, right? You have seen sister algebras, but you have never seen how to construct a sister algebra out of a simplicial complex, right? So, question is can I understand this problem in terms of sister algebras? Starting with this. Can I construct a sister algebra and then ask this question that after passing to few of those subdivisions whether those objects are isomorphic or not. Question makes sense. So of course you may say that starting with this I pass to starting from sigma I pass to this and initially we assume the sister algebra with that simplicial complex then you will go to the subdivision in each subdivision you associate a sister algebra and now no, that no, no in this case what did I do I subdivide it 
few times look at this space and then I want to understand whether they are isomorphic or not. Of course, I could have done whatever you are saying that way also. I may subdivide this space, but I have not divide, de defined the concept of subdivision of a space. It does not make sense. It is defined through this simplicial complex level. But in this case, question is that is there a direct association of a sister algebra? Not through this part, because if you factorize your construction like this, then whatever you conclude about this will factorize through your information on this. So you want an independent construction of a sister algebra. And that is the spirit, meaning given any question, you would try to attach sister algebras and analyze those. That is the spirit. So this spirit is kind of conveyed in this construction. <coughs> now what I do is, I will describe this construction and then maybe we will go for proving these facts. They are necessary to define one concept which is needed in the construction. So, yeah. So, definition is the following. <coughs> C sigma is the universal. sister algebra with positive generators okay so i just that's why i defined that notion of positivity a greater than or equal to 0 means spectrum of that element is greater than or equal to 0 and it is self adjoint so this has got a set of positive generators hs for each s in the vertex set such that there are two conditions firstly this product is 0 whenever this is not a simplex or equivalent I am also using the word phase okay. and here this even if I write it like that repetition is allowed among so Yes, that is because, so while defining that, okay, so that is a very good question, let us spend some time because how is it that these ideas are translated? Of course, I am not denying, so first step is that we want to attach sister algebras, but we do not want to forget that there is a topological space attached to it and how is that done? And we want to extract the essence of that. So idea is there is a construction and we want to extract the essence. So in that case, we looked at functions from B sigma to 0 to 1. So, essence of that is translated in this fact. Now, of course, this means in particular given any function, I can look at f at s. So, this is my mental image of h s. This is the mental image and therefore, I choose them to be positive elements and there is another technical reason which I will remark just in a moment. So, this is the mental image and therefore, as f s as a function is non-negative. So, sister algebra element should be always thought of functions on some space. So, as this function is non-negative, you demand that they are non-negative or positive meaning same as positive because I am not saying they are strictly positive. And the second condition, second condition says that summation f s equal to 1. If I could cancel h t then this is reminiscent of that condition. So, these two conditions are indeed very much motivated by those two. So, 
it is so and of course there is kind of I should stop for a minute and why is this second sum finite? Yes, I remember your name, Uma Mageshwaran. Why is this second sum finite? You don't know? No, you think. You think about the first condition and second condition and so on. You think. So, what does the first condition say? First condition say that if finite domain most of them are zero. Locally finite. locally finite. So, it is locally finite. Very good point. I forgot to write down. It is locally finite. So, we are considering locally finite. Yeah, then most of them are 0. And most of them are 0. Therefore, this is a finite sum. So, there is no problem. Otherwise, of course, whenever there is a sum, one has to look at it carefully. So, fine. So, C sigma is the universal sister algebra generated by these two conditions question becomes again as usual meaning why should it exist that means to answer this question again we, we always did it that we looked at representations of <coughs> we can consider the finite star algebra generated by elements like that and then look at its representations, produce a norm. And in this case, since I have done this exercise several times, what I do is I want to produce one specific representation to prove that that is non-empty. And that is obtained by the following. I know that if I look at this space now, continuous functions on sigma or maybe in general this one need not be compact this local finiteness ensures locally compactness it is locally compact no problem so i can always find a homomorphism from c sigma to here how because i map my hss to these coordinate functions so hs is mapped to fs Incorrect, incorrect, sorry, this is wrong, does not make sense. So, I have to, I have Hs and it should go to a function. So, function, function is defined on kind of mod sigma and that is evaluation at S, okay. No, this is an incorrect expression. Expression is kind of faulty. So, I want to map. So, pi of Hs should be a function in C0 of mod sigma. Maybe I call it G. So, elements of mod sigma are functions. So, G of F is now this is okay. But did you prove that any relation, if I have any relation of symbols, you can associate a sister algebra? No, no, I did not do that. Again, so I'll, I should remark. In this case, they satisfy a bunch of relations. What is the idea? Idea is that it should have one non-trivial representation. Class of representation should be non-empty, and then if I take supremum of norms over all those representations, it should be finite. Then it gives a pre-sister norm. So, now I am proving that it has got one non-trivial representation. So, if I consider the star algebra generated by this satisfying these two relations and then I define a homomorphism, then those relations are satisfied. First condition says that support of, if it is not from the support, then it is 0. Of course, because supports of F are faces. So, if they do not come from a face, then this is 0. Second condition says summation f is equal to 1. Why so, did you write s there? Where? Pi on. Because pi takes this element here. So then should s be there on the right hand side? No. Pi of hs is this element g 
which is defined by this condition. So, G of course depends upon S. <coughs> Meaning, if you like, you can also put a S, I do not mind, but it is this. <coughs> yeah. So, this shows that the class of representations is non empty, and of course, then comes the question of boundedness. If I take a polynomial or a yeah, non commuting polynomial in the entries, say P of H s, then if I look at pi of this and norm of that, I want to prove that this is bounded. So, there is some bound depending upon this polynomial alone and then again this brings us back to his question, why is it that you demand all these things are positive because positivity along with this implies that norm of this, <coughs> these objects are bounded by 1. So, all these are norm bounded by 1. So, this is satisfied because L1 kind of norm of P pulls out. So, it defines a pre sister norm and one can define this sister algebra. So, what is the value of this norm in I do not want to take the unit because I want to look at this C 0 mod sigma kind of thing. Otherwise, of course, I could have taken a unit and done a simplicial complexes can be one point compactified. Yeah, I could have done that, but then that will make us pass from ok. This question has a better answer. He is saying that why is it that I do not instead of writing it like that, why do not I throw an extra unit here and the reason behind that is somewhat kind of long. These objects were introduced by Kuhn's, they are called as you can imagine non-commutative simplicial complexes. And he introduced this not with my kind of agenda that starting with some simplicial complex you can try to understand it through sister algebras. His motivation was more concrete. So, he wanted to understand there is something very celebrated question called Baumkorn conjecture and there certain kind of he wanted to give a conceptual explanation behind this conjecture. So, he will eventually consider simplices with group actions and there you cannot extend the group action to this one point compactification ok. So, there kind of you cannot play with this object, they are fixed. So, because of his motivation you cannot throw one, we could have thrown in fact for my point even for finite simplicial complexes ok. So, this question which is related with topological it is called Hopware Mutum that you start with two simplicial complexes whether they admit barycentric subdivisions <coughs> whose geometric realizations are homeomorphic it is called Hopware Mutum. So, for that even for meaning it is for finite simplicial complexes that question which I just erase and then I barycentrically subdivide and then ask whether sigma 1 k 1 is isomorphic with sigma 2 k 2. So, this question is kind of meaningful and of course, interesting even for meaning challenging for finite simplicial complexes and in that case of course, I could have put 1 here ok. <coughs> so, <coughs> that is about it. So, message is starting from anything try to attach sister algebras and analyze them and <coughs> how do you do that will be maybe taken up next week. Now, I go back and spend some time maybe in discussing what is that this notion of positivity because except for this notion I have kind of you understand every word right. Yes. So far, you just define a sister algebra in a simplicial complex. But 
what does that uh, Perhaps. refinements? Uh, yes. Okay. So let us do that. So. Strictly speaking, that is not necessary because I start with two simplicial complexes. I subdivide it a couple of times and then I ask this question that whether the associated sister algebras are isomorphic or not. Right. Yeah. So that is not necessary, but I want to make one remark at least. So yeah, I want to make at least one remark. This object, so this is a hierarchy of questions. Earlier I said that if I ask you, okay, why don't you attach a sister algebra and then of course you are not from this game, you will say, okay, no problem, I consider this and then I consider this, then I will say answering this question is kind of should be easier or maybe this has more information here, they are homeomorphisms, okay, it factorizes, I cannot see it has got more information, but it factorizes through that construction. Now. Of course, <coughs> starting with this, we have produced a sister algebra and now we will have a genuine factorization. That means the following, that now instead of these two conditions, I put a third condition now. And which is not very difficult, that C sigma is commutative. <coughs> then one can prove that now I have not described any topological space or anything, right? I started with the simplicial complex, I defined a sister algebra straight. It is a universal sister algebra satisfying those conditions. Of course, there is something under the carpet. Then C sigma is isomorphic with C0 of mod sigma. Therefore, And this is the universal one that says we have a surjective homomorphism from C sigma to C0 of mod sigma. We have a surjective homomorphism that says that this construction actually factorizes through this construction in a non trivial manner. Now, in some sense, kind of which is weaker than sister algebra isomorphisms, these two objects are equivalent, but I do not enter into that. Okay, so, this is a genuine factorization, and the information, of course, now after if you do functional analysis first and algebraic topology next, then one could have defined this space through this. Of course, strictly speaking, there is a gap. Because while proving its existence, I had to produce one concrete representation that uses this. In case I can give a concrete really using functions, I can do that. Then of course, it will define this object. So fine. And oh, <coughs> maps. So. For simplicial complexes, suppose I have, I want to transfer entire picture of simplicial complexes into sister algebras. That means if I have two simplicial complexes and a map. So what are relevant maps between simplicial complexes? Firstly, it should map the vertex sets to vertex sets. And secondly, if this is a face, then image of this meaning phi v n, there could be repetitions here, okay. Then this must be a face, okay. Such maps are called morphisms between simplicial complexes. And now as I want to transfer this entire thing there, so it should induce <coughs> maps. So, I should say phi star, it induces maps in the other direction. So, C sigma 2 to C sigma 1 
phi star of h of t equal to summation h s this notation is confusing but it has got its advantages firstly these h t's are generators of this object these are generators of this object same notation ok maybe if you like you can put one of them decorate them with primes and of course we demand a condition that given any point it has got finitely many pre images ok only on that class we can define these morphisms okay. then that subcategory of simplicial complexes there is a contravariant functor so is it, there a definition that follows from this uh, no 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 this is a definition i am defining but no no i mean infinite pre image yes. no no that is a condition so again I have the category simp of simplicial complexes, but I do not consider all morphisms. I consider only those morphisms such that inverse image of a vertex is finitely many points. Okay. Then on that subcategory, I have a contravariant functor which passes from simplicial complexes to sister algebras. Yeah, now it is complete. Yeah. <coughs> Why is bounded and why is extend to the sister level? Ah. Because it is it is universal something, so it should oh. satisfy <coughs> exactly. So if I have uh, two simplexes, yes, and I can do some construction there, like join them or something. Then will there be some yes. group acting cross product? Yes, yes. Yes, of course, because meaning I, I, I am not following through this entire paper, but of course you can carry through. That is the point. That is the point. So you can indeed kind of capture this notion. We, we, we capture simplicial complexes through topology. It has nothing to do with topology, of course. It is a combinatorial object. But we always transfer it to topology, but instead of topology, you can do it through sister algebras. And of course, in many other contexts, you can attach sister algebras do it directly meaning you need not factorize it through something else. So <coughs> today I have not done anything so I should just prove that proposition and I will go that because whatever sister algebras I was planning to do and doing in the last 3-4 days you can always have a look at that note or any other book there are dozens of books on that elementary material that is essentially first chapter of any book. So you can always read it on your own. But on your own you may not kind of hit upon this is a nice construction, you may not hit upon this construction. So that's why you yeah. write the names of which one? Books. Books they can Google. These days with Google you can find out anything. <laughs> <laughs> it is <laughs> I want to prove that the following are equivalent. So, this proof is interesting because it uses understanding of the function calculus. So, B is a self adjoint element I mean, what did you say about the refinement I mean just I what is this refinement? Oh, that has response to Kunal's thing that suppose yeah. you want to understand this question at the level of Sister algebras, okay. So that whatever, Hobbes, Mutum, or whatever, that asks this question. You do it couple of times, need not be same. So you can ask this question now. You do it couple of times. You look at the sister algebra. I mean, and yeah, that's why. I asked. Why? I mean, is that sister algebra related to the previous one? I mean, yes. So I mean, how do you associate that? So that what did I do? I, mean, I started with C sigma and, take the and I produced C0 of that. Okay. So if you can prove that you, you have something on that. But of course, of course, this map is not 
intrinsically defined. I did not, I cannot define it intrinsically because C sigma has got some extra piece of structure. It is not just a sister algebra, but with a specific set of generators and so on. So, of course, in this case, it is not intrinsic because we have got this information sigma 1k. So, if you can prove that these two are isomorphic, then by passage you can say something on that. For example, I do not know whether there is any intrinsic definition of this map. It uses this structure sigma heavily. Without using this, can I define it somehow? So why is that this non commutative Will it be any easier than this non commutative I don't know. There is no reason to believe kind of either way. There is no reason to believe either way. But as people are yeah. No. Meaning, non commutative question will be certainly more difficult. I cannot <laughs> say that, <laughs> meaning, anybody's guess will be, it will be difficult. But the point is that you, you should not straight jump, in, jump into a space. Maybe in some other problems, you can factorize it through this. <laughs> So, you are not here, so I discussed another example coming from number theory. So, again in that case it really kind of contributes something. Okay. So, This is a equal to a star and sorry, this minus was okay. Now t minus a, of course it <laughs> makes sense t as t a, but it is t minus a, less than t, yeah. So, Of course, 1 implies 2 is easy, it is straight from this function calculus. A is greater than or equal to 0. So, I can think of kind of this function square root of A as B or if I want to do it more elaborate manner, then I consider this algebra C star algebra generated by A and 1. I prove that this is isomorphic with continuous functions on spectrum of A, which is a sister algebra isomorphism. Now, here under this isomorphism, this function A corresponds to this map which takes Z to Z, where Z is a point in the spectrum which is non negative so their square root z is a function right is the function z so square root z is a kind of real valued function so using this isomorphism i can bring it here and i can call its image square root a on this side it satisfies this relation as it is a homomorphism therefore on this side it will satisfy so, that is the kind of idea or advantage of this thing. This implies that in the other direction, <coughs> I consider sister algebra generated by B and 1 of course. Then I know this is isomorphic with C of spectrum of B. B is self adjoint, so this is a subset of R. So, there I can consider this function z going to z square. This function, the corresponding element on this side is A, and range of this function, so let us call it F. Image of F is contained in R plus. So, that is translated in the statement that spectrum of A is greater than equal to 0. So, this 
So, spectral theorem allows you to transfer from this starting with any self adjoint element you look at functions and you transfer 3 and 4 are also same. So, I want to prove say one implies three. So, I know that A is positive. So, I look at spectrum of T minus A. This is nothing but T minus lambda and lambda is in spectrum of A and norm of T minus A is supremum mod mu, mu is in spectrum of T minus A. So, here is 0, here is norm A. So, spectrum of A is here, take any T here. So, T minus any of these quantities is really contained in this thing. So, this quantity is less than equal to T. Yes, is it clear to you? No, no it is not. It looks like it is not. It is clear with a kind of hesitation. So, first of all, so that theorem says whenever I say A is a self adjoint element and look at functions of A and scalars, okay, then you should think of A as that you have this set spectrum of A, right. A is self adjoint, so this is a subset of R. You should think of A as a function defined on this subset. Okay. This is a function defined on this subset. All I know is that it is a subset of R plus and spectral radius is less than equal to in this case of course sister algebra equal to. So, this is a function on a set in this contained within this. The function is x going to x. Now, what is t minus a? t minus a, so I have this function f defined on sigma a to r plus f of x is x. Now, I look at this set t minus sigma a. t minus sigma a means I take every element, look at the difference. On this set, I consider this function t minus a that means that I consider this function g where g of t minus x is like. Is it correct? Now, it looks like something is wrong. No? g on sigma a is t minus a. So, I define a function g on sigma a g of x is t minus x. Okay. So, suppose this is my x point here, x is somewhere on this side. So, if I look at t minus x, t is here. So, t minus x is this length, it is certainly smaller than this entire length. So, that is the meaning that this, is, this norm is supremum over all these differences, supremum over mod mu, mu is in spectrum of t minus a and that is less than or equal to t. All the steps are basically same. <coughs> of course, 3 implies 4 because it is for all t and therefore, for some t. And now, you want to prove 4 implies 1. So, again what does 1 say? 1 says that of course, 4 says a equal to a star. That means, I can think of a as some function defined on a subset of real line. I do not know whether it is on the positive side or negative side. So, maybe 
temporarily this is spectrum but then this is minus norm a and this is plus norm a it is captured within that and then this says that if I look at t minus a so there is some t which is definitely on this side this is my t and now if I look at t minus elements of the spectrum that is less than t. So, let us take some point on this side of 0 let us call it lambda ok. So, this is a negative number actually right. So, if I take t minus lambda that becomes this length plus this length. So, that is certainly larger than this length. So, this condition will be violated that means that there is no point in the spectrum which is on this part. So, that says A is positive ok. <coughs> but while defining positive elements I wrote another condition not these two, but another condition of course, we will prove that meaning <coughs> this is the most useful. So, again proof of that also uses spectral theorem and you can already see power of this fact that you can identify A with functions on some set because otherwise it is quite an abstract thing. So, A plus is a closed cone. So, cone means the following O. Oh. A plus is all those elements A such that So, if I take two positive elements then their sum is there. I multiply by a non negative real then the product is also there. This is first part. So, there is nothing to prove in this because spectrum of what? Non degenerate also. Is it A and B are not proper? Oh, I see. Okay, okay. Oh, so yeah, maybe <coughs> okay. So you take two elements A B from A plus and then you try to estimate this quantity and see by triangle inequality that this is less than equal to this is triangle inequality and this is condition 4 implies and So, this condition is satisfied with T equal to norm A plus norm B. So, 4 holds and this implies it is closed because these conditions are stable under limits like closed conditions. So, this is closed. So, I just prove that thing and then I stop today. <coughs> so,
So if a is positive, then of course a equal to b square and b is self adjacent. So a is already of this form this. So there is nothing to prove if I want to prove one implies this. All I need to prove is this which condition you said is satisfied you want to depend on fourth this four uh, so four it is strictly so you have no to no this is less than equal to uh, uh, okay. that is less than equal okay. it is a non negativity condition okay. right yeah. it is not strict so, but, yeah. yeah so suppose a equal to x star x and then you want to prove that this is so so okay. Or for equal to also equal to because uh, square root x makes sense on that interval. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> so, so A is self adjoint, and now if we we are given a function say f, so again mental image is you have spectrum of A which is on this subset of real line and you have some function defined here. So, you can think of this function f plus f plus of x is maximum of x and 0 and f minus of x is is it correct? x or mod no, 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 x. <coughs> x. I am defending a function. So, oh. okay, sorry, z. This is z. Z is a point in real line. Real line. Yeah. <coughs> and f minus of x is how do you define it? Is it minimum? No, it is not. Right. So let me do it. Yeah. Minimum of minus x and zero. Yeah. Maximum. Maximum. So let me do it for minus f. Yeah. So maximum of minus z and zero. Then of course, we know that and product of these two is 0 and they are individually positive functions. So, you can form those functions of this element A, call them A plus, A minus and those relations will transform because that is the point. And now you look at this quantity. <coughs> you expand with a minus sign, and then this is A, so substitute, and these conditions will imply a minus half into a plus is 0 or use commutativity and so on and so forth. So, this is a minus square and that is an element in a plus. On the other hand, you write down this as where b and c are Self adjoint <coughs> again do manipulations. I did not write everything because it is in the notes. So, realize that this quantity is same as So, this is positive, these are positive, so this is positive. Now, spectrum of spectrum of this quantity is same as spectrum of that. So, this says 
this condition says spectrum of this product x minus half star x a minus half is contained in r minus and this says this is spectrum of this is contained in r plus but we know that their spectrum is same therefore spectrum of this quantity is really 0 and that is same as a minus square. So, that says spectrum of a minus square is 0 and that implies if I consider this function f minus that takes the value 0. So, that function is 0. So, that implies a minus is equal to 0. So, a equal to a plus this is an element here. So, I stop here today and maybe next day I will follow through whatever is there. Yeah, but in the last two talks So, I will stop with this proposition that A can be put inside B H and then comes the actual question that how do you classify or try to understand these objects in detail and that is motivated by to a large extent motivated by topology. So, that will be taken up in the last two lectures. Okay, how does one use topological ideas to produce invariance of these objects and say something.